I think that there will be you know, more, uh, more influx of institutional interest into the space. Uh, BlackRock has been the 800-pound gorilla entering uh, with, with the Bitcoin ETF and now with the ETH ETF cleared in the U.S. Um, I think we can expect to see even more institutional interest in the space. In terms of the, the ETF approval, it seemed like a, a sort of a seminal moment. And there was a lot of talk about institutional investment coming in into crypto. What, what exactly are we starting to see here? Are you starting to see some of the more traditional players wanting to enter this market via the ETFs? I, I think, yes, absolutely, via the ETFs, as well as through tokenization of real-world assets. So that's something we're seeing uh, from our custody customer base, uh, major banks like SockGen being leaders here, um, to tokenize different uh, securities assets like bonds and equities. You mentioned the ETF. Um, mm. How significant do you think that's going to be? Uh, will it be as significant as Bitcoin, given, you know, it is a smaller, it is still the second largest, but it is a, a smaller market cap and perhaps not understood as well by, by the retail investor base and even the institutional investor base? I think that uh, the market awareness and education of what's happening in crypto is increasing and expanding. Um, so I, I think, you know, that we can see more uh, more stories and narratives around the ecosystem of um, activity that's de being developed on top of Ethereum. Uh, so, so, yeah, we can wait and see what happens. Monica, I want to move away from the markets onto, onto Ripple because you made a big announcement earlier this year around a Ripple stablecoin. Mm -hmm. uh, why? Uh, so, uh, uh, US dollar stablecoins are a, a major market. So, stablecoins overall today are about $160 billion in market cap. You see projections of this market reaching about $3 trillion within the next four to five years. Um, and I think that's for a few reasons. One is just demand to hold U.S. dollars, easy access to U.S. dollars in various parts of the world. Two, for payments, which has been the, the core of our business for many years. So the reason we're entering this market is we see demand from our customers, financial institutions of various types, um, who want to use blockchain for more efficient global payments and want to do it using a U.S. dollar stable. Um, Ripple, you know, we have a 10 plus year legacy of being a very trusted, compliant, secure player in the enterprise space. Um, so I think we're a great candidate to, to bring a, a trusted U.S. dollar stable to the market. There are a lot of people wanted me to ask this question. When are you planning to launch it? Uh, you know, we're working on it right now and uh, you can expect to see more from us later this year. Uh, so is it likely going to launch this year then? Likely. Uh, have you begun buying the assets to back that at the moment as well? Uh, we're, we're working on all of the things you need to do in order to bring a product like this to market. So everything from the banking relationships to the distribution relationships to uh, compliance, that's number one for us, is making sure that we are you know, abiding by the rules and regs per jurisdiction and have the right licensing. And, and just the relationship between the stablecoin and XRP, obviously you use XRP in some of your products in terms of the cross-border. If you've got the stable coin. Is there a need for XRP in this mix? Absolutely. We use a mix of assets for to serve our payments customers, so including stable coins as well as XRP. The the use case for XRP in particular is as it was envisioned by the original creators of the ledger and of XRP. And that is as a bridge asset for the long tail of currency pairs. And we're talking about tokenization of other types of assets. In the future, when you have new types of assets um, tokenized on chain, uh, having a really efficient intermediary bridge asset to, to make you know any, any pair liquid is important. And just a very quick final question, Monica. As we uh, think about the ETF landscape that's happening, we've got uh, a potential approval for Ether. Uh, do you expect any XRP ETFs uh, to pop up? I think it would make a lot of sense. Uh, if you think about it, only XRP and Bitcoin have regulatory clarity on status in the U.S. XRP has been a top 10 crypto asset by market cap and is about a top five if you look at daily traded volume. So I think that would make a lot of sense.